this is my review of the Apprentice S and uh, the steering linkage, especially as it pertains to uh, if you decide that you're going to fly this thing with floats. Actually, the, the steering linkage isn't all that great if you fly it in the uh, land base mode, but it was pretty mediocre uh, for land steering. It turns into what I feel is uh, critical when you add the floats to it. It makes a bad thing even worse. So, if you're doing the floats, my first recommendation is put the landing gear back on, the front gear on here. If you're like me, went ahead, got the floats put onto it, uh, maybe tooled it around a while and had troubles with this thing dipping its wing and uh, maybe even lucky to get up in the air and if you brought it back in, dipping its wing again once you touch the water. So, start off getting rid of your supplied linkage here that uh, came with float set. Remove that, put the landing gear back in and reason I do that is because without that you really don't know where straight is and if you're going to convert this back and forth the uh, it'd be nice to have this gear linkage set up so when you switch back to land base that the uh, that the nose gear is actually lined up for you when you switch back so put the landing gear back in and the first focus on is the original linkage that's applied for the rudder. Well, actually, it's for this nose gear. The rudder is fine; it doesn't. It's not terribly demanding. But this nose gear linkage that comes with it is uh, right here, pretty thin. And they throw in this little Z-bend. Apparently, they've got this tubing. Maybe it's carbon fiber. Stiffens up the straight end a little bit, but. It, uh, it's got a lot of give and if you take your nose gear while it's still on and you give it a twist you'll find that that nose gear you can turn every which way and won't be able to drive the servo back so what I found is first off pull that off and if you look down the path it is actually a there's actually a straight line of sight there. You can actually see daylight at the end. You can actually see the servo arm if you look straight down. So there is a clear shot from the nose gear linkage up here to the servo arm. Nothing preventing you from putting a straight rod in here, and that's what I did. I think this is the, uh, the 256 rod. And I put a small bend at each end to line up with the servo arm and put a regular 256 uh, what do they call it, the clevis in place. We have to drill out the servo arm hole a little bit there to get that through there. And uh, for me, I tried to do the Z-bend out at the nose gear as was supplied on the original linkage. My skills as uh, being able to put a Z-bend in were pretty miserable. So what I did is I got one of these solder-on style clevises and of course you solder that on then you have to be pretty close on your on your linkage length you can use your other um, gear to kind of line up with the original length leave yourself a little bit of room but uh, size it up slowly and using the landing gear to know where the landing gear is straight and lining up the rudder as straight get your get your control rod length straightened out there and what you can't do with the uh, original linkage now you can take the nose gear and actually back drive that servo. If you can drive that, you've got pretty good authority over that nose gear. So first things first, get good authority over the nose gear. Now my assumption here is the, re is the reason that may have had the jog put in there is maybe twofold. One might be is to prevent servo damage when you have those rough landings. Uh, when you go to rudder, I don't think that's going to be much of a concern. Um, Second off, if you look where they had the speed controller, it was sitting right in path with that rod. So what I found is that this is just kind of like a little battery mount bracket they've got there. I went out and got some Velcro, took the speed controller off the bottom where it was glued, set it up on top, Velcroed it in, 
Velcro helps hold my wires out of the way as well. Then when your uh, battery wires come off the speed controller, go ahead and feed that control rod linkage right there between the two. Be careful so you don't get any abrasion. I just make sure I get the wires all routed out so that control rod isn't going to wear through any of the wiring. And it's a straight shot. Second off, I found using the clevis. I had some binding here. The plastic comes right out here. And I've got a spring that I'm going to push down here to help hold that clevis tight and that would that would interfere here. I just want to cut out the plastic with a razor knife and to give myself adequate room the last thing you need to do is have that linkage bind up on that on that opening coming through. So now the nose gear has got plenty of authority go ahead take the nose gear out put the supplied linkage in here to drive your rudder and go ahead and hook up your um, cable as would be uh, the OEM. The other side of this now came down to is that once you got authority to the nose gear work your way back one step farther and start back driving you'd find that instead of being able to back drive that linkage up there with the rudder what happens is before it pushes the linkage back it just simply pushes the casing in and out it'll flex out here it'll push out of here so I've got it glued the casing itself is glued right firmly to the uh, to the mount here so that's going nowhere. I've got uh, a, a few bands holding it just down at the bottom location here. You notice we have a very gradual single curvature in here. Want that? Uh, you don't want any resistance and, and if you put any bends in there that's going to have a lot of resistance. That's going to give you feedback problems. Second off, to come straight out of this linkage I found the best path was not tying it to this bracket which guess what? It moves. That'll move before you move the rudder. So that as a reference to hold the cable was extremely ineffective. So took a little bit of plywood, coated it with some uh, CA glue, make it a little water resistant, cut a slot in there with my X-Acto knife, and I played with that cable till I got a nice straight shot again, finding that neutral point where that cable came straight out and had a very smooth path the back of that bracket over there. And that's where I set this in. Set it in with some some uh, foam safe CA. I put a little bit of hot glue over the top of this to keep this again so the cable will not slide in the bracket. And now you notice I got some pretty good authority from the water rudder. There is no way you're going to obtain that with the OEM setup. So now I've got plenty of authority and then you can go ahead and center your linkage. Uh, second thing is that once you install the clevis down here there's a fairly large ring of plastic on this mount here and uh, you'll notice that I've cut the diameter down considerably. That allow me to run that servo arm quite a ways and not interfere with that clevis and you can still get some reinforcement to hold that down. That clevis will probably get replaced with the metal one here shortly but that's what I had on hand. Either way Cut the diameter out on that uh, servo arm there, and you'll get plenty of plenty of travel. And uh, just for Cosmex, I trimmed this servo arm down as well. Probably not terribly critical, but either way. But you'll find out that as uh, as it was originally set up, you'd turn the rudder one way, you turn it the other way, you'd set up your your uh, cables for center and every time you center that rudder up it'd go to a different center um, because it would keep driving it back. You turn right and if you're heaven forbid you'd be operating in beginner mode you'd never have the authority in beginner mode to ever turn that rudder back to even so much as neutral much less make a turn the other direction. So very frustrating in the water. Here we got lots of authority now. I can drive that back and forth keep returning it to, to neutral every time. Neutral is neutral and lots of authority to drive it left and right and uh, a lot happier with that. A little bit of messing around and I've got to believe that of course I haven't done any land-based flying. That's certainly going to pay off even on land-based flying. 
You don't need your nose gear pointing every which direction there. Get some authority on that. You got that hard of a landing. All right, so maybe I'll back drive and strip out of servo gear, but hey, we've been there before. I think there's a better chance of stripping that out if you land with a cockeyed nose gear anyway. So that's my, that's my answer. I'm sure there's others out there, but that was, uh, for me, one of my biggest frustrations on this going to float is lack of rudder authority. And it's two stepped here. First off, dial in the linkage to the nose gear. After you uh, firm up that nose gear linkage as being, being robust, then go back and review the cable routing and firm up that cable routing. You don't want either end of that cable moving and you certainly don't want a kink in there because you can't afford the back resistance either. You'll want that to be able to float on its own, return to neutral. Um, happy flying. Oh, well, that's close. Okay. I think I'll call it quits. How many minutes you got? I'm only halfway through the battery. Well, halfway through the timer, not the battery. You're not going to put it up again? Sure, why not? Okay.